Hello, my name's Jared. I spoke with you this morning on the phone uh, here to do your home inspection today. So what we do is we go around, we're looking for the major deficiencies, things that could lead to costly, costly repairs or things that could be safety concerns. Not really focused on the minor cosmetic stuff that comes along with a used house. So uh, we take a lot of pictures. A lot of these pictures are just reference pictures for us. So we're gonna, we've got these pictures uploaded right here. We're gonna go through these right now and uh, kind of explain some of the uh, findings we've got. You see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So started with the front right corner of the home, worked our way around. You've got underground drainage, so a good idea to keep an eye on those during a good heavy rain. Make sure water is not bubbling over the top, indicating that the line is clogged. Garage door looks good. Around the front entryway, just getting some pictures. So one missing window screen at the front of the house. That's actually on the left side of the garage. It's a garage window. And here I'm just kind of pointing out, we've got some trims that they've poured the concrete right up against. Um, so those are gonna be kind of vulnerable to moisture damage if any water pools up against those trims. You've got a composite cement siding with a com uh, com composition wood trims. And then this is kind of near the entryway on the other side, you've got some more trims that are even more buried in concrete. And at this location, we did find some deterioration at those trims that are uh, against the concrete there, kind of soft, you know, moisture gets trapped there. Uh, front here, we've got some vegetation right up against the siding. We always recommend getting that trimmed away. You know, 12 to 18 inches is preferable. It gives room for the siding to breathe and dry out. And, uh, you know, also vegetation against the siding can lead a path for wood destroying insects to gain access pretty easily. These are your foundation vents, allowing airflow below the home, which helps control moisture. So uh, paint and caulking overall is pretty good. We do have a few areas where some of the caulking at some of the trims primarily have uh, started to fail. So kind of yearly maintenance things you wanna go around, check that out and make any improvements as necessary. Make sure water's not getting behind there. Some more uh, vegetation against the siding should be trimmed back. Now we're on the left side of the home here. Some of these pictures were kind of hard to see with the sunlight so bright this morning. This is your AC compressor on the left side of the home. Um, everything out there looks fine with it. Crawl space access right next to there, so we'll come back to that. That's gonna be for below the home. Some more failed caulk at a lower trim. Back of the house, so a lot of vegetation. So a couple trees right there, right up against the siding. We'd recommend getting those away. Some more filled caulk out of a couple window trims. This one here is right behind one of these trees and uh, you know it is pretty soft. Some moisture has got into those trims so we'd recommend replacing uh, any areas with uh, deteriorated trims like that. And that was kind of right in this location behind this tree. Um, back patio. We've got a GFCI outlet. Those are uh, safety devices. Uh, required anywhere where there's potentially water. So we've got one at the back of the house here. And then we've also got one in the garage which controls the front garage outlet. We'll come to that a little later here. Now I'm looking above the patio roof. There is one piece of siding that's got a crack in it. Um, so we'd recommend sealing that up, make sure no moisture is getting uh, behind that crack. And that was right here above the patio roof. And then kind of back right-hand corner, some more area of deteriorated trim. We've got some failed caulk around there, so some moisture has worked its way in there. Back patio roof, taking a peek at that. Everything looked good there. Now we're on the right side of the house. Check the water pressure between 40 and 80 is what we're looking for, and it looks like we're right about 56, so good water pressure. And then just some failed caulks along the lower trims on the right side of the house. And then this is where two pieces of siding uh, join together where the caulking has failed as well. Uh, gas shutoff valve here. We've got another shutoff valve at the meter, which we'll come to. And then to the left of this, we've got our uh, exterior dryer vent cover. Um, and that should be periodically checked because I, we do have some lint build up there, which is a fire hazard. So that should be cleaned out and uh, maintained periodically. This uh, exterior outlet on the right side of the home is connected to the GFCI outlet on the back uh, patio area. Electric meter, uh, phone coming in, cable. We'll come back to this. You got a 200 amp service. And then you do have an underground sprinkler system. That's one of those uh, components that we don't fully inspect. All Pretty much everything's buried, so we've got no access to see it. 
uh, be something for a, a landscape guy to come out and check out for you if you want. Uh, gas meter, there's shut off valve up here, so if there's ever a gas emergency or an earthquake, it's recommended to turn that off. Uh, have a utility company come out and check that out. Driveway and sidewalks look good. Now I'm just getting some yard pictures. Fences look like they're good. Headed up to the roof, so gutters were clean. Um, we do have skylights look good. We do have some minor moss growth on the roof, so that's something you're gonna wanna keep up with. That'll degrade the roof a little faster, so kind of yearly maintenance stuff there. This is where your furnace is exhausting out. So some of the uh, rooftop uh, vents are starting to rust. So one of those things you want to keep an eye on. And, you know, usually when the roof's replaced on the line, those would be re replaced with it. Kind of close-up view of the roofing material. So overall, the roof doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Um, just kind of general wear. There are a couple concerns we'll come to here in a second. This is where your water heater is venting out. Plumbing vent boots all look good. So this, this is your garage roof, and then this is your home's roof. And this little area right here, we found a little section that was uh, kind of soft when you stand on it. And there's a, a exposed staple right here that's kind of pulling out. So there may be some moisture that's getting in down past the staple and causing this area a little bit of deterioration at the sheathing. So we'll, we'll recommend um, having that further evaluated by a roofer. And... You know, and then kind of going around, I did find a few other staples that were exposed. So those should all be sealed up uh, so moisture's not getting down past those. So again, we'll recommend further evaluation uh, and make sure any of those are sealed up and any necessary repairs that might need to be done. Just looking inside the exterior uh, electrical box out there, your main breaker's at. Now we're headed in the garage, so typical cracks in the garage floor. That's pretty much every garage, nothing structurally concerning. You got a chain drive opener. We tested the two safety features and those were working just fine. This uh, GFCI outlet in the garage controls your garage outlets and the front exterior outlet. And then I'm headed up to the little attic space above the garage, which was nice and dry. So you have an attic space above the garage, but there's no attic space above the home. Manufactured homes typically don't have an attic access. They're all closed off. So I looked real good under that area of soft roof sheathing inside the house, and I couldn't see any signs that any moisture has made it uh, through to the drywall or anything. Okay, so we're at the water heater now. We've got a ream. It's a 2013 40-gallon gas water heater. Um, Everything looks good. The one thing we'll mention is it doesn't have the seismic straps. So here in Washington, it's supposed to have uh, seismic straps uh, for earthquake protection. Furnace, you got a gas furnace. We kicked it on. Everything seems to be running just fine. Looks like the last service date of the furnace and air conditioner unit was back in 2016. So with gas furnaces, we always recommend yearly service. So we're going to recommend having that serviced and checked out. Uh, other than that, everything looked good there. And then on the back panel, the front panel of the furnace is where your air filter is at. So that should be checked periodically and cleaned when necessary. Uh, now I'm looking at your electrical panel. Nice and clean in there. Doesn't look like anybody's actually been in there messing around with anything. Everything looked good. Master bathroom. So this right side sink the at the faucet, the faucet handle uh, leaks when you move it around. So... Uh, we'd recommend either valve replacement or repairs there so we don't get any, end up with any water below the sink in the cabinet below. At the bathtub, the hot water supply valve just, it doesn't stop where it's supposed to. It just spins all the way around, so that might need a valve replacement there. Shower, everything else was working good. Uh, guest bathroom has your GSCI reset for both bathrooms. Other than that, everything in the guest bathroom was good. Laundry room area, not much to talk about in there. Master bedroom, so um, we've got smoke detectors in the bedrooms. Now I'm in the front little bedroom. You know, not much to talk about there. You know, kind of throughout the house, you've got areas where the carpet's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's loose in areas, so it might be time for a car somebody to come out and stretch their carpets for you. Uh, thermostat, pretty basic, uh, kick that on, furnace was working just fine. So we've got a smoke detector out in the common area, but we don't have a CO detector. Uh, so that's one thing we'll mention. 
every home is supposed to have a CO detector nowadays. Kitchen. Kitchen sink, so the, the handle, the kitchen sink faucet leaks right at the base here. So we'd like to see that either repaired or replaced so no water is getting down below the sink on accident. The dishwasher, we try to kick that on. It makes your regular noise, noises and doesn't seem to be operating properly. So um, we'll recommend having that further evaluated and repaired as necessary or replaced possibly. And then uh, the garbage disposal, the splash guards all deteriorated. So the splash guards helps prevents things from flying back out when you've got that on. And then looking down inside there, it's pretty rusted and corroded. So it might be time just for a uh, garbage disposal replacement. Now we're gonna head below the home. So in manufactured homes, you've got a vapor barrier or what they call a belly wrap, which basically uh, holds all your insulation up in place, hides a lot of the heating ducting and a lot of the plumbing. So, you know, we've got some main waistline plumbing visible to us. Um, so we check out everything that we're able to see. Don't see any signs of leaks at any of the plumbing down there. Everything's nice and dry. Didn't see any signs of uh, um, seasonal water. These are just straps for uh, earthquake protection. This is a picture of your belly wrap, which is uh, at the bottom of the home there. Uh, you got a mainline uh, duct going through to all the different units. Nice and dry and pretty darn clean. Uh, below the home, so this is at the same uh, side where the crawl space access is, probably about 20 feet closer to the house, but this appears to be your main water shutoff valve. So that is located below the house and that was it. So we'll get this report out to you uh, later this evening. If you got any questions, once you get the report, uh, you know, feel free to give us a call or even months down the road, um, you know, we're here for you. So give us a call anytime. Thank you very much.